Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 13th of March 2020 and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 16th of March and what a week that's been. Uh, really difficult to know where to start. Truly historic week. Um, worst week for equity markets. Worst one day falls since 1987 for the FTSE 100 and yet here we are today looking at similarly impressive gains but even though um, we look as if we're going to finish Friday higher on the day doesn't change the fact that this has been a brutal week for global equities a globally a negative week a very negative week we finished the end of last week on the FTSE 100 around about 6,460 and as you can see from our UK 100 chart here we are now 800 points below that. So even though we've seen some decent rallies this week, we saw a decent one on Tuesday and ultimately that did not stick. This Friday one might find itself able to stick a little bit more. Um, the measures by the Federal Reserve to inject trillions of US dollars into the US Treasury market in order to improve liquidity. The decisions by Spanish and Italian regulators to impose short selling bans on certain stocks and sectors within their markets and a Chinese central bank triple R cut has helped I think um, sentiment a little bit ahead of the weekend but I also think there may be um, some expectation that while we've seen additional monetary policy measures this week as evidenced by the European Central Bank on Thursday and the Bank of England earlier this week um, there could be some additional fiscal measures um, announced over the weekend and I think that's helping to support markets in the short term as we head into next week. It's also a big week coming up um, for central banks next week. We've got three very key central bank rate decisions. There's an expectation that the Federal Reserve may well cut by another 50 basis points. Personally, I think that's completely unnecessary. Um, this, isn't about, this isn't about the level of rates, it never has been. It's about, it's about smoothing over cash flow problems for companies that are likely to find life very, very difficult as this coronavirus um, crisis goes on to its next phase. And certainly the indications from the UK government that um, cases may not peak for another 10 to 14 weeks, 10 to 12 weeks, which is three months, is likely to make things very, very difficult for consumer discretionaries. Um, and in that context, I think it'll be very useful um, in light of what's coming up in the week ahead to look at pubs, retailers, and obviously travel stocks have taken an absolute pasting, travel and leisure taken an absolute pasting in the past, um, in the past few weeks with British Airways stock, uh, IAG, down over 40%, EasyJet down over 40%. Even Whitbread, owner of Premier Inn, their shares are down over 40% as well since the 21st of February. Um, Norwegian's laid off, Norwegian Airline has laid off half its staff. As they're seeing a decent rebound as well as Norwegian, as the Norwegian government basically abolished air passenger duty um, and airport fees um, uh, until uh, the middle to end of this year. Now there's a headline hitting the wires at the moment that um, Olaf Schultz, the German finance minister, says Germany could implement a stimulus programme if needed. That's helping, giving, that's helping to boost markets a little bit further. But as everything with Germany, um, I'll believe it when I see it because they do have a debt break and this is something that's been said on countless occasions. At some point in the future it may well happen. Um, we'll just have to see whether or not um, they follow through with their rhetoric because since the Eurozone debt crisis flared up in 2012 they've been long on talk and uh, short on action so we'll see how that goes but let's look at the key chart points on the FTSE 100 and the various indices and it's been a brutal week for the FTSE it was last seen back in 2012 um, there's a series of lows um, in and around here 2011-2012 around about 5,240, 5,250, which is roughly where we were here. As you can see from this chart, I mean, this is just ugliness personified in terms of this fall here. So we've held above 5,200. 
we're back above 5,600. As I said in my video last week, um, these, this, these chart points come with a health warning. Um, the market can move very, very quickly, and as can be seen from this week's price action, we'd, we've, we've fallen peak to trough from last week's close over 1,200 points, which is unprecedented. Um, so that's the FTSE 100, very key levels there. Trying to pick a chart point out of that is next to impossible, so I'm not even going to try. Let's look at the Germany 30 or the DAX. Um, slightly more modest, slightly similarly decent declines, but if you actually look at where the DAX has come from, it is a total return index, so obviously it includes dividends. It's still quite a bit higher from where it was even in 2014, 2015. So while these declines have been big, um, they're fairly modest when you look at it in the context of where we've come from. But what we have done is we've spiked below the trend line from these lows all the way back here and didn't take out the lows that we saw in 2016. So that's going to be a very key level going forward for the German DAX if we decide to revisit those levels. Um, we look at the S&P 500, it's a similar sort of story. If I take a long-term weekly chart here from the 2009 lows, oh, this looks interesting, doesn't it? Um, and then suddenly we've rebounded straight off it. Um, so, as I said, we had, I think I said this a few weeks ago, we had certainly scoped to fall an awful lot further in the S&P and we've done precisely that and we've rebounded off the trend line from the 2009 lows but also um, didn't take out the lows that we saw in December 2018. So, um, you know, again, these have been brutal moves but in the overall context of where we were even five years ago for US markets and German markets, the declines are bearable if you're able to stay in stocks for the long haul. So just having a quick look at that. Now, let's look ahead to next week because there could be significant further action from the Federal Reserve, but also from the Bank of Japan and the Swiss National Bank. There's big, there's big meetings for those central banks. The Federal Reserve meets on the 18th of March and they caught markets on the hop early this month by cutting rates by 50 basis points in what was a rather botched attempt to try and support sentiment didn't work particularly well, um, given the fact that we're now quite significantly below the levels that we were when they cut rates. Cut, um, so the big, I think the big change, the big thing to look for this week is whether or not the Fed go again, or whether they decide that injecting liquidity is a better policy rather than using rates, because rates is a very blunt instrument. Central banks need to be much more creative, but more importantly, policymakers need to step up. Ultimately, what we saw earlier this week from the UK government was exactly the sort of thing we want to see from European governments. We want to see that from the US government. And in particular, Donald Trump, President Trump, needs to get his head around the fact that if he mishandles this any more than he already has done, he's not going to get re-elected. And that may well concentrate his policy response going forward. The travel ban was a ridiculous overreaction. The big problem is not people coming into the US and spreading the virus. The big problem at the moment is the US don't have a, a decent way of actually monitoring um, cases that they already have. Now, the pound has taken a little bit of a hit in the past few weeks. Um, and has broken below the 200-day moving average, which rather blows my case for a bullish sterling out of the water. So when the facts change, I change my mind. We've broken below the 200-day moving average, which means that any rallies are likely to find significant resistance around the 200-day moving average, but more importantly, through these lows here, which is around about 127.20. So... Um, in the short to medium term, it looks like we could well see further sterling weakness back towards these series of lows around about 122.80, 123. If we are able to move back above the 200-day moving average in 127.20, then obviously there is a case that we could see a little bit of a short squeeze. Um, so at the moment, the dollar appears to be um, trumping, um, no pun intended, 
um, the pound and pushing it lower. And while we're below the 200-day moving average, momentum has now shifted towards the downside and your mentality has to change as well. So you're looking to, to, you're looking to sell the rally while below the 200-day moving average and the series of lows around about 127.20 to 127.40 um, on here. Similar sort of story, I think, with Euro-Dollar, even though the Euro is looking slightly more positive. Um, talk of a fiscal stimulus is obviously helping to boost the Euro. Um, at the expense of the dollar, but I'm still very, very nervous about really being uh, long of euros, given the extent of this sell-off that we've seen this week. Significantly bearish reversal there. We have found a little bit of support above the 50 and the 200-day moving averages, but the oscillator, the, the market is starting to roll over. And I think while we're below 112.30, 112.40, then I think you still have to sell the rally on euro dollar unless of course we break above this January high here um, and then that could squeeze us back to the highs that we saw earlier this month but I think it's very much a case of sell the rally in euro dollar and cable at the moment having seen the, the moves that we've seen in the past week or so um, looking ahead to other pieces of data we've got Chinese retail sales which are due out over the weekend or Monday morning um, and these are likely to be ugly these are likely to be pretty bad um, Chinese retail sales for February most of China was shut down for most of February um, and with the Chinese consumer now making up more than 50% of the Chinese economy a nasty number this week could well give us an early insight into the potential of Im potential impact of what to come here in the UK, Europe and more broadly with respect to how consumer spending was affected as a result of the shutdowns that we saw in China. And if they are as ugly as I suspect that we, they could be, um, then that doesn't bode well um, for company earnings in the retail sector, the leisure sector more broadly going forward. And that means that they, they will definitely need more fiscal measures, more um, forbearance from banks going forward. We've also got UK wages and unemployment numbers from the 17th uh, on the 17th of March and these are numbers to January and obviously these will be um, very dated the unemployment numbers um, close to 40 year lows wage growth around 3% consumers do appear to have cut back as evidenced by a slowdown in retail sales though obviously toilet roll sales could have boosted retail sales numbers going forward um, but this week's numbers are likely to show the UK economy was resilient in January but they've got a lag so I'm not really sure how constructive they are or instructive they are likely to be um, we've also got German ZEW sentiment that was improving towards the beginning of this year but that's going to that's that's going to take a dive um, and will take a dive I would imagine given the volatility that we've seen this week again I'm not sure how instructive that that will be but certainly in terms of company earnings this week we've got JD Weatherspoon which is due out on the 20th and while the traditional British pub has been struggling and the Chancellor did take measures earlier this week to freeze beer duty spirits duty and what have you pubs are going to feel the brunt of any slowdown in consumer spending so for all Tim Martin's bullishness about um, the British pub post Brexit um, the suspension of the Premier League season the fact that um, if the coronavirus crisis goes on to the next level and large gatherings are banned by the UK government the pub will be one of the first to feel the draft so it'll be interesting to find out what the outlook will be or how JD Witherspoon view the outlook um, going forward. Cineworld shares have taken an absolute pasting this week uh, they re released their numbers this week and this week they suggested that um, a prolonged slowdown could actually mean that they were at risk of breaching their banking covenants and that is a real problem so these sorts of industries and businesses will need some forbearance over the course bridging loans bridging finance what have you over the course of the next three to six months given the fact the UK government has suggested 
that the coronavirus here in the UK may not peak for the next until um, another 10 or 12 weeks. Um, also got numbers from Ocado. Now, depending on whether or not you view Ocado as a technology solutions provider or a retailer, um, they are still feeling the costs of the fires from last year. They came in at well over £100 million. Last month, the company said it expected to grow retail revenue for the upcoming year by 10 to 15 percent, despite posting a loss of £214.5 million. Big question is how it sees the outlook going forward as more consumers start to take home deliveries. They could well feel the benefit of that. In the US, we've got FedEx on the 17th. How's the delivery market holding up um, against what's going to be a potential slowdown in the US and as well as a global slowdown as well. And we've also got Darden Restaurants, who, if you've ever been to the US, own Olive Garden and the Longhorn Steakhouse. How are they likely to do if US consumers start to find themselves quarantined going forward? So that's it for this week. Um, thank you very much for listening. Big points for the week are the Fed meeting, Bank of Japan, Swiss National Bank, and obviously look for any fiscal measures over the weekend that might or might not get announced as we head back for Monday morning. In the meantime, have a great weekend and I'll see you all again next week, either working remotely or working from my desk.